While we are aware of buoyancy being used to convert wave power into electricity, we seem to neglect the idea of using the very powerful buoyancy forces as a direct tool at locations away from the sea. This is definitely a mistake because serious levels of power can be generated from such a system. However, this style of energy generation is more suited to business or factory levels of power, where power generation costing one American cent per kilowatt hour can be produced provided that you have some uh, 3.75 million US dollars available for the construction costs. One such system is the hydro cell power generator of James Kwok. There's no magic trick with the hydro which is a design from James Kwok CPNG FIE Ost Ek Mech E Chartered Professional Engineer and Fellow of the Institution of Engineers of Australia. A low pressure air chamber will sink in water due to gravity if the chamber is heavier than the air chamber will sustain with its buoyancy. If the air pressure in the chamber is increased then it will rise in the water due to buoyancy. There are three ways by which the mechanism harvests energy in the process. 1. The moving chambers are arranged as a linear electric generator so that the movement of their magnets along coils in the shaft generates electricity. 2. The connecting cables impart their movement via rack and pinion gearing into a flywheel to run an electric generator. And 3. Pneumatic hydraulic cylinders are pressurized for storage to be released into a turbo generator. The claim is that despite the losses from friction of the cylinders moving through water and the other moving parts, that more energy is generated to keep the pressure pressurization stroke depressurization cycle going and there is a net energy gain. The company says that the footprint area of a one megawatt one megawatt hydro plus plant is approximately six hundred square meters by nineteen meters high. That's about two thousand square feet at 62 feet high. There is a description in Chinese at www.hydroonline.com. The generator sizes suggest that suggested by the company are 250 kilowatts, 500 kilowatts and a thousand kilowatts which is a megawatt. Part of the patent application which James made is shown here. It is US 2010-0307-149A1, uh, um, dated the 9th of December 2010. The inventor, of course, being James Kwok. It's entitled Hydrodyn Hydrodynamic Energy Generation System. The patent has a number of very explicit drawings and they're shown here with information as to how the thing operates and with the specific numbers showing each particular part of the design. Just in broad outline, flotation cylinder moves up in the water inside this container and it turns uh, the top of the rod that is mounted on due to the spiral groove that it travels along. It is stopped from rotating itself by having two sliders on a vertical fixed rod alongside it. That creates a turning motion here which spins the, uh, the shaft of a generator mounted above here. 
which is a neat arrangement. The air going into and out of the particular buoyancy chamber is collected in or supplied by containers uh, inside the actual structure itself. I don't want to go into the full detail of every item and particular detail of this, this style of operation. It is shown here in detail and you're welcome to work through it step by step until you understand fully exactly how it operates. The detail is considerable and the information is very interesting. There are of course two of these flotation devices located inside the water contained inside this general structure. A word of warning and that is that the weight of water involved in a generator of this size is very substantial. Water weighs 62 pounds per cubic meter of fresh cubic foot of fresh water and 64 pounds uh, per cubic foot of seawater. So with the large structure involved you have a very high weight of water inside the structure itself. This diagram here shows the arrangement and with storage tanks and air pressurized air tanks underneath and the feeding pipes and everything you have a large volume of water physically sitting on this structure here. It's got the generating apparatus for electricity at the bottom uh, as well as additional generating capacity at the top and you notice that there are several steps leading up to the part that is supporting the actual container of water and the container of water is very substantial as you see from the introductory information you're looking at more than 60 foot depth of water and that is a lot in the way of physical weight of the material itself. You also need to pay attention to the fact that you need pipes to carry the gas and this table here shows you the difference of the volume of gas that can be pumped in any particular period of time. They've chosen one period of time and they're showing both the length of the pipe in feet and the pipe size inside diameter and the nominal pipe description that you use when you're ordering it. But you notice that a half inch 0.622 inch inner diameter um, for just a 10 foot length of pipe will only pipe pump 120 uh, cubic units through the pipe whereas uh, an 8 inch nominal pipe will pump in that same period of time 7.98 of the same units or with a 300 foot length uh, it will do 25,895 units. You notice the, notice the major difference in carrying capacity of any of these pipes with just a change from a 10 foot, which is 3 meter length, to a modest 20 foot, 6 meter length. And those lengths are the sort of lengths needed for many applications. Also look at the figures for the half inch nominal diameter pipe. With just a 10 foot length, it would take a full two minutes to pump just one cubic foot of air through it. It follows then that pipes of considerably larger diameter are genuinely needed for a project like the hydro. It's possible to, to construct a much more simple buoyancy generator and if necessary one which is a good deal smaller perhaps like this. You have a container of water as before and you've got a series of buckets 
attached to a cable which runs around two pulley wheels which have got a metal shaft to support the pulley wheels. The buckets on one side are all full of water. On the other side, thanks to an air pump operating just under the support for the tank, pumps air up into the buckets as they come down and around and are being moving up. So in all the period when this bucket is moving up, before this bucket comes round to get in the way, you get air from your air pump filling the container. Now those buckets with air inside them are very much lighter than the buckets with water inside them. And that gives a strong rotational energy to the power output shaft, which in this instant has been chosen at the bottom of the structure. You don't have to do it that way, of course. Um, you can have one or more rotating shafts submerged in water in such a way that they're effectively positioned one above the other. Each shaft has one, and prefer pre preferably two or more sprocket wheels mounted on it. Each of these sprocket wheels engages with a continuous chain loop, which also engages with the sprocket of the wheel which is positioned vertically above it. These vertical chain loops fall, form a belt style support for a series of identical buckets. On one side of the vertical belt, the buckets have their open face upwards, and on the other side, the bucket openings are facing downwards. An air pump is positioned directly underneath the set of buckets, which have the bucket open openings facing downwards. The air pump generates an upward moving stream of air which collects in the rising buckets displacing the water filling the bucket. This results in a powerful upward thrust caused by the buoyancy of that bucket and the thrust causes the bucket to move upwards rotating both the horizontal shafts and bringing another water filled bucket into position above the air pump. A gearing system transfer the transfers the rotational torque thus produced to a generator which produces electricity for general purpose. This is a generator whose input shaft is rotated through buoyancy caused by air-filled containers submerged in a tank of water or some other suitable heavy liquid. Continuous powerful rotation of the generator shaft is produced through the use of one or more conventional, commercially available uh, air pumps. The air pump is used to fill a series of containers which are open at one end and which are attached to what is effectively a belt arrangement created by two strong chain link loops which mesh with sprocket wheels mounted on the two shafts, either or both of which can be used for the extraction of useful power, preferably for driving an electricity generator, but not necessarily limited to that, that function, as any powerful torque has many useful applications. Objectives are to provide a power generation system which is very simple in form and which can be understood, operated and maintained by people with minimal training. Also, a system which uses components which are readily available, thus avoiding significant manufacturing costs, and one which operates without the need for any kind of complex mechanism or high precision equipment, and which can operate with a wide range of commercially available products. As the a chain continues round the sprocket wheels, the bucket which is being forced upwards to the water by the pressure of air inside it versus the water inside the opposing one, spills the air as it reaches the top 
above the pulley wheel. The air runs straight out as the bucket turns round, and then as the bucket goes down it's filled continuously and fully with water. This is basically a very simple system and one that's quite easy to set up. The side view for something like this in the most common used type of operation is where the bucket which is most of the width of the actual tank turns the upper uh, power shaft which has got a, a drive wheel on it which connects with a generator. The drive wheel is a good deal bigger on the on the water immersed shaft compared to the fly the drive wheel on the alternator or generator itself. The that gives you a gearing up so that the alternator shaft is spun much more rapidly than the uh, shaft turning inside the water. You can have of course more than one of these units attached side by side and the same shaft can be used to drive the alternator possibly through a bigger gearing up ratio so that you get a very fast rotation of the alternator shaft generating the necessary power for you. There is an alternative method to be used which is you can pump the air from the above the water surface. That doesn't sound like anything very great when you are just told about it but it is uh, quite important. The arrangement is that where you have the situation where there are wells that have dried out and are not going to work anymore, you can then coat the sides of the well with concrete and then you can use uh, your apparatus from above ground to both draw off the power and to feed the air into the buckets from above. That is a very cheap and convenient way of doing it. It's not a bad idea to have a cowl which concentrates the flow of water and air as an upward stream going into the buckets. It has been suggested that wells which have gone dry in India might be faced with concrete and the air fed from the surface in order to generate electricity where it's just not available. This simple arrangement has the added advantage that the electrical generator is located above the water surface and so it's easy to get at it for both installation and servicing.